Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where we're working together step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets and you can download those in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. You'll find a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can access information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam and it's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and how to make the best use of the time on exam day when you're working through your exam paper. So if you visit SharonBill.com you'll find it's all there. If you can give me a like that would be super and please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated, there's lots more in store. And so now we're going to have a look at the 2015 Grade 4 Paper A. So if you turn with me to the first page, to page 2, and we'll have a look at question 1 together. So as I always say, I suggest that you have a good go of this on your own, first of all. It doesn't matter if you go wrong. If you're always writing in pencil, you can just uh, erase any mistakes and uh, you'll learn through those mistakes much more than just passively copying it through with me. So have a go of this on your own, first of all, and then we'll uh, work through it together now. So let's have a look at question one. So all of the questions are referring back to this little melody here. And so we've got a little bit of um, Italian and um, performance directions here. Now this is where the presentation of the paper changes from 2018 onwards. You're no longer required to write out the definitions. These will be presented to you as a multiple choice format. However, I would suggest that you just go ahead and answer this as the paper presents it here. It's a really good um, revision opportunity. So Allegro. This harkens back right back to grade one, I think, when you first came across this term. Allegro means fast or quickly. And here, this word here, pew, means more. So there we go. So let's have a look now at uh, this next question. How many semiquavers or sixteenth notes is the first note in bar five worth? So, sorry, here, this one. So we've got a double dotted minimum, a double dotted half note. So I find it easier to diagram this out. So first of all, let's see how much a crotchet or a quarter note works out as. So we know that that divides into two quavers or two eighth notes, which divides into four semi-quavers or sixteenth notes, which divides... That, oh yeah, that's what we're after. And getting carried away there, we're looking for semi-quavers. So that's one crotchet bit's worth. And so to start off with, a dotted minim, just the minim or the half note with one dot, is three times that. So we've got four times three, which gives us twelve. And now we've got this extra dot to think about. So if this is worth two beats, the minim or the half note is worth two beats shuffle that down a little bit. Half of that, the first dot is half of that, which is one beat, and then half as much again, half of that half is half a beat. So that's now worth a quaver. So we know that that divides into two semi-quavers. So 12 plus two more gives us 14. And so that's the answer there, 14. Let's move on to the next one. So we need to describe fully the two bracketed melodic intervals marked X and Y in bars 9 and 10. Now we always count from the lowest note, even though it comes second, we're counting upwards from this to this for interval X and from this to this for interval Y. So here we're going from a B to a D natural. So first of all, B is the space, C is the line, that's second, third, so we know it's a third, but now we need to describe that more fully. So B to D sharp would be major, however that sharp is made natural, and if you notice that makes it smaller. So B to D sharp is major, made smaller, 
is a minor interval. That's part of B minor scale, and so we call that a minor third. And then let's look at the next one. Here we're going from B up to E. One is the space, two, three, four. And there's no alterations from the key signature and um, B to E is perfect. So that's a perfect fourth. Do excuse me, sneezing. There we go. So let's move on to this next one. So write us a brief or a double whole note. So a brief or a double whole note, an enharmonic equivalent of the last note in bar four. So let's see. So bar four is an F double sharp. It's easy to visualize this on a piano keyboard, even if you don't play piano. So F double sharp. So we could call it a G, or I suppose alternatively, we could call it an A double flat so either one of those be careful where you place the pitch so be careful that you get the correct octave this is not the one above middle C but the octave above that and so we need to place that carefully so here is our G natural as a breathe so that would be correct alternatively we could call it a double make it a breathe double flat. There we go. So that's that one completed. Let's look at the next question. So we need to rewrite the last note of the melody so that it sounds at the same pitch. So be careful you don't jump octaves. This is where it's important to use middle C as an anchor point, as a reference point. And we need to change to alto clef. So we've got to put in the new clef and the key signature. So the clef is the alto clef. So there would be our middle C, so if we hook the clef around that. So we've got a key signature of four sharps, so C, D, E, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, there's our key signature. So now let's look at the note that we're referring back to, the last note of the melody. So here we have the D sharp, but the key signature will take care of that, so we're just concentrating on the D, above middle C and so if we look at that here's middle C and so there's the D above that so that's that question completed now if we just turn the page and look at the next question too we're not actually going to be working through this question this is either writing a rhythm to words or the alternative in this paper was the four bar rhythm to the given opening. However, from 2018 onwards, neither of these questions will be on the paper, so we don't need to do any of those. From 2018 onwards, this is no longer part of the exam, so there's no need for us to address this question at all for exam purposes, so we're going to skip that. And so the next question, question three, is the question that we'll look at in the next video. So uh, we'll look at that in the next video next time. I do hope that that's helpful to you. If you can give me a like, that would be super. Please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more in store. Please do go to SharonBill.com and make use of all of the resource and information that's available to help you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.